Hello everyone and welcome back. Now, in the previous video I talked about existence and uniqueness theorems and I talked about the sort of failure of the geometric approach. But by and large, the geometric approach is an extremely useful and extremely fruitful way of approaching dynamical systems analysis. Remember we saw that really you just need sort of um, continuity and differentiability of the right hand side of your differential equation. Now, most or a ton of the equations that we encounter throughout nature, physical sciences, engineering, they all adhere to this property, right? And in particular, all of the ones we're going to see in this class are going to fit into this framework, okay? Now, what I do want to point out, though, is that there's an alternative method of this geometric approach that is more based in physics. So if you're coming at this with a more of a physics or maybe an engineering background, you might prefer thinking about things in this way. And this method is using potentials, okay? So let's imagine, again, we've got our differential equation, x dot is equal to f of x. So we thought about this as sort of moving along a line, maybe a little particle that's flowing back and forth along this line. But another way you can think of this is a particle flowing through an energy potential, okay? So maybe it's sort of moving along a landscape. I've given you this example before, but my, my sort of ball bounce, balancing at the top of a mountain. You can think of this as sort of an energy landscape and you sort of want to decrease your energy and settle down. So the way that you can think about this is you can think about a potential function. Okay, so this is coming from energy potential that you might be familiar with, or, you know, potential energy if you are a, have a bit of a physics background. But this is conventionally written as a function V of X and defined by saying that the right-hand side of the differential equation, F of X, is the negative derivative of this potential, okay? So it's kind of a weird way uh, to think about this. Uh, the first thing that I want to point out is the minus sign, okay? So this is physics convention. This comes from the idea that you think of things flowing downhill. And I'll show you what this means in a moment once we start doing some examples. But let me, let me actually do a little bit of analysis here, okay? So again, in this case, the, what you're going to interpret here is that V is an energy landscape that your particle is moving along. And what you want is you want your particle to settle down into the sort of uh, lowest energy states, okay? So, first of all, how is it that we interpret this? Let's say let X of T be a solution of X dot equal to f of x, okay? Now, if x of t is the particle, we can ask ourselves, what is the energy potential of that particle along the solution, right? So what I do is I take my solution and I put it inside of my potential, okay? So you could imagine this as, as sort of measuring the energy of the system at each point in time, okay? So then what I could do is I could ask, how is the energy changing? So I could take a derivative of this thing, right? Okay, so now I get a function of a function. We've done this before, right? This is just the chain rule. So this would give me dv dx times dx dt. dx dt, that's x dot. So this is dv dx times f of x, but also f of x is the negative of dv dx. So this becomes negative dv dx squared, which is less than or equal to zero. So this tells me that v is decreasing along trajectories. This is where that minus sign comes in. You think of yourself rolling downhill. So if you have a sort of general picture of what V might look like, maybe it's something like this. You have a sort of 
particle that's rolling down the hills of this thing, okay? So maybe I'm gonna show a whole bunch of different particles uh, wherever they might be starting. But they're rolling down, and you notice that the only time that the derivative is zero, the only time this thing stops, is when you are at a critical point of your potential energy. So when you hit one of these wells, for example, right? So you can imagine this is like a big ditch that catches your, uh, your particle, right? This thing is rolling down the hill until it gets to the lowest possible energy it can get to. It cannot go back up the hill because it, that would require more energy to go up the hill, right? It's trying to settle down. It does not want to go up the hill. It settles into the lowest possible state that it can get to. Now, of course, you can see from my little picture here that there are some energetic, or there are some states with lower energies than others, right? But that depends on where I start, all right? So if I start somewhere close to this little well, then I'm going to wind up at this really, really small value of the energy. It's favorable. But if I start over here, I can't quite get all the way down there. The best I can do is settle into this little patch of energy. Okay? So it's very, very similar to that, that phase line approach that we've seen already. It's just a different way of sort of intuiting these things, right? And you're thinking about sort of falling down the surface of these, maybe sort of sliding, these little particles running along the surface of this potential well, instead of sort of moving along a line. So let's do some really, uh, let's do one really, really simple example just so we can get some intuition here, okay? So here's minus, uh, x dot is equal to minus x, okay? Well, here's the first thing. This is my f of x, so I want to know what my potential can be. So v of x, well, the derivative of v of x is equal to minus x. So that tells me that if I take an antiderivative of this thing and I negate it, I'm going to get x squared over 2, right? If I take the derivative of v of x, I get just x, and then I negate it to get negative x. And technically, I can put a plus c on the end of this thing. Now, that plus c does nothing because... All I'm talking about is qualitative features here, right? I'm asking, you know, is it rolling downhill or uphill? It doesn't matter if I drew my picture here or drew it up here or drew it down here. You're still rolling along the surface. So technically, you can always just take C equal to zero, okay? You never have to consider that value of C in here. So that's one nice thing that we can forget about. But that gives me the potential energy so let's do this two different ways, okay? Let's do the potential first, the energy landscape method of uh, geometrically plotting this thing. So in this case, I get x, I get v of x, and I probably put a lot of dead space in this picture, but that's okay. Here's my potential energy. Now, you can see that there's a critical point at the bottom of this thing. That is a fixed point, right? Critical points are when the derivative is equal to zero. That's the same as having the original differential equation equal to zero, which gives you a fixed point, an equilibrium, a steady state, whatever you want to call it. So, similar conventions is just a different way of looking at it. And the way that we think about this, we're sort of, our particle is flowing or it's rolling down the hill until it settles into the fixed point, okay? So if you are more physics minded, you're probably going to look at this thing and you're going to say, well, this thing is stable, right? Because I'm going to sort of settle into this little well at the bottom of this thing. But, you know, since we started with the geometric approach of phase lines, we could do the same thing. We could say, what does the phase line for this look like? Well, the phase line uses the original differential equation that was given to us. In this case, again, we have a fixed point at zero. That's the only time x is equal to zero. And we can very, very easily plot this thing 
to see the same stability that our potential landscape is telling us as well, okay? Two different ways of plotting exactly the same thing. It just depends on which one you like. The problem with the potential method is that it doesn't carry over well to higher dimensions, okay? We will come back to it in two dimensions, um, but it becomes a little bit more complicated and you don't always have potentials in higher dimensions, okay? So this is why I started with the phase line diagram. But uh, nonetheless, you know, for these one-dimensional problems, you can very much use these potentials as well. Let me give you one more example that's kind of fun. X minus X cubed. So in this case, all you need to do is take an antiderivative to get the potential. I get X squared over 2 minus X to the 4 over 4. Again, no constant of integration is necessary here. Uh, so in this case, I get a nice, uh, what's called a double well potential. It has two stable critical points, and, or sorry, fixed points, and one unstable fixed point. Why? If I start close to this thing, I fall off the top of the mountain, and I fall into one of these uh, little potential wells, we call these things, okay? This is what's called a double well potential. Now, that's probably not difficult to see why. It's a double well potential. It has two wells. Sorry, not potentials. It has two different wells. It has two stable fixed points. It has one unstable fixed point that separates these two things out, right? So whichever one of these you wind up on depends on where your particle starts. If your particle starts up here, it'll roll towards this well down here. If your particle starts over here, it'll roll down here. Similarly, this guy in the middle is separating out where people go. If you start to the left of them, you go into this well. If you start to the right, you go into this well. This is what's referred to in mathematics and in nature as bi-stability. It's a method of sort of competition that you can find in models, right? You have two stable states that are competing for dominance. Whichever one gets chosen is how you initialize the system. If you started over here, this one wins. If you started right here, this one wins. There is an inherent competition in these double well potentials and in these bi-stable problems, right? They're sort of uh, fighting for power, seeing which one is going to win out. And the only way you can determine that is where you start, that other key component of dynamical systems. You have the equations of motion and you have where you start. And in this case, we can see where you start makes a huge difference. Okay, when we come back in the next video, we'll start talking about one of my favorite topics in all of dynamical systems, and that is bifurcations.